guys, it's Rob. I'm out on my Indian today. Uh, so far I've only put about, uh, I don't know, about 40 miles on it total. I think I've kind of figured out the shifting issue. Uh, the toe shifter was a little bit too low, and I think it has something to do with the boots I wear. Today I'm wearing my Timberline work boots, which I use to tool around the yard, do the mowing, and all that kind of stuff. And the shifting seems to be working a lot better. Um, I did adjust the toe shifter up a little bit, and even with my motorcycle boots and that adjustment, I still seem to blow third to fourth shifts. So definitely something to do with the boots as well as the shifter itself. But anyway, uh, I thought I'd go out for a little ride today and maybe do a vlog. I don't know if this will come out. Kind of a dreary day, a little bit windy. Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to get rain or not, but it definitely looks like we might. Looks like a cold northern winter day down here in sunny southern or sunny central Florida, not southern Florida. Um, anywho, uh, hoping, hoping for a little ride out up into uh, some of these back roads back out here. Hopefully there won't be too much traffic on the roads that I'm planning to take. I got people behind me trying to push me and it's a 35 mile, mile an hour zone and I'm doing almost 40. I kind of hate that, especially when I'm getting used to a new bike. Uh, anyway, so far really liking the Indian. Uh, completely different ride from the Dino 1. If I could have kept both bikes, I definitely would. But. Uh, yeah, had, had to trade in the DN01 to get the Indian. Do I miss it? Do I regret it? I, I do miss the DN01. Uh, do I regret the trade? No. Uh, I kind of needed to, I needed to do a little something else. But anyway, um, again, I'm so far I'm liking the Indian. It rides pretty good. A little bit rougher than the uh, DN01. DN01 was a bit smoother, but uh, different kind of bike, so of course it's going to run a little bit different. One thing I am having a little bit of a issue with is my windshield. The windshield kind of throws the air right into the top of my helmet, so I'm getting a lot of wind buffeting, a lot of noise at over 40. Uh, however, I saw that uh, I joined the Indian Motorcycle Forum and uh, I saw other scout owners had the same complaint and there were some links to a aftermarket shield and for the life of me, I can't remember the name of the uh, the company, but uh, the shield ha uh, has a uses the same hardware as the Indian Shield, but it has a little bit of a flip up towards the top so that it kind of uh, throws the wind over you instead of right into your face. And it's also supposed to be a little wider. Um, and I'll I'll post the name of the company that I ordered it from. The uh, the guy was really nice. After I placed my order, he informed me that he had a 20% off sale going on for the holidays, and he would credit my credit card for the 20% discount, which was uh, very nice. I mean, consider the fact that I had already spent the money, even without the discount, uh, and he comes back and he gives me some of my money back. That's uh, that's pretty good. Uh, so thank you to John at uh, uh, the company, insert name here. And uh, yeah, so hopefully within a few weeks I'll have a, uh, another windshield to put on here and see if that helps with the wind buffeting a little bit. Anyway, I'm going to kind of try to concentrate on my riding here. Again, I'm still not real used to the bike, so definitely need to pay attention to what I'm doing. And as of right now, I've got a total of 48 miles on the clock on this thing. Got to put a lot more on. <laughs> hey guys! I have to say, I have really no firm idea where I'm at. I mean, I know, kind of, sort of, because I looked at the maps before I hopped on the bike. But, uh, yeah, I kind of kind of rode off and uh, went a little different route than I usually go and just trying to explore. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me, tell me something. This is kind of a follow-up on McKaylee 7 video from uh, a few weeks ago. Do you have a uh, destination when you go out for a ride? Do you have to have a destination? I used to not. I mean, I used to just get on my bike and go explore. These days, I'm a lot more anal. 
In fact, I had to coax myself to get on the bike today because I'm like, you know, I have to plan everything down to the nth degree. Everything. I got to look at maps. I got to plan what I'm taking, what I'm going to wear, uh, where I'm going to go, when I'm going to be back. And, and I don't know. Uh, because I spend so much time in the planning phase and the what if phase and what do I need to do phase and how do I prep phase, I never get to get out and get to ride. <laughs> uh, but today, even though I did do some pre planning, the other day I looked at the map and I said, hey, I've never been down that road. It looks like a two lane road that goes out to nowhere. And it pretty much does. There is a bit of traffic and it's a 55 mile an hour speed limit, which I wish was kind of slower. But uh, yeah, I've never been down this road and uh, it's not exactly the route I was planning to take. So I, I took a little diversion. I went left instead of going right up here at one of the turns. Just to kind of, instead of making like a big loop and coming right back home, I decided, hey, I'll go a little further down this road. And now I'm headed back. I, I went down here and I turned around because this head's kind of southwest and I don't want to end up in Tampa. I uh, wouldn't mind going to see my brother, and this might be a, an alternate route to get to his house, but uh, not today. Not with the bike so new and me still trying to break it in and learning how to ride it. And I don't know if you could hear the difference. When I dip down below this windshield, it's nice and quiet. You hear the bike. <laughs> you hear the pipes. But uh, when I sit up straight, this, this windshield blasts right about forehead level starts making a lot of noise. I just got to dip down a few inches. But uh, yeah, I, I think the, uh, the other windshield that I mentioned I was, I was buying uh, should make a big difference. Anyway, I've never been out here, so I wasn't talking at all on the way down, and I'm sure people who were getting behind me were getting pissed. So I'm doing like 45 and 50 instead of 55 and 60 like everybody else. But I don't know the road. You know, I don't want to come around a curve and find out that it's a decreasing radius and I'm going 60 miles an hour. That would like really suck, you know. So anyway, uh, trying to trying to be safe, trying to figure out topics to talk about, but also trying to concentrate on actually enjoying my ride. And this is where I turned at right here. Yeah. This road, uh, when I came down it, I figured it's easier to go to the left and to my right, so I went ahead and went left, and I went down that road for about four or five miles, or three miles, whatever it was, I don't know. Now, up coming up this way, I've never been this way. This isn't the way I came, but I wanted to check it out, because it seems like a neat little road. And it is, look at this, got these overhanging trees, not too many homes or anything else out here, nice twisty little road. Yeah, man, this is pretty nice. I'm also trying to figure out my shift ranges, too. I mean, I know what it says in the manual, but when you're actually out on the road and picking twisties and whatever else, your shift ranges need to adjust some, right? Anyway, yeah. Anyway, I'm hoping to get the floorboards for this bike. Um, I find that the, the foot controls are a little cramped. To get my foot up where it's comfortable on the peg, the foot controls are kind of in my way. I don't know if you can see the, uh, the shifter down there. The toe of my boot is not up under it. And if I put my boot back here, it's not like on the instep of my foot and it's not comfortable. I don't feel that the foot is actually resting. I have to hold it there. Anyway, still trying to uh, be gentle with my motor. So I am finding like when I'm trying to pull out in the traffic, I do have to give it a little bit of gas and rev it up a little bit to, to pull out. I'm trying not to abuse it. Uh, oh, another, ooh, look at that, nice, 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 nice. Lovely, lovely, hills, I love it out here. Anyway, uh, kind of another another topic is, what is your uh, philosophy on engine break-in? Do you try to follow the manual? Do you just ride normally? Do you believe in the hard break-ins? I mean, I know some people like the hard break-in. They say that it uh, gets you a better race-type engine, but I'm not looking for a race-type engine. You know, I, race engines tend to wear out after 
not so many miles because they are ridden really hard. That's not my intent. Other people say that, yeah, breaking them in hard will actually make the engine last longer, but I don't, I don't know if I buy that philosophy. I figure if I follow what the, uh, follow what the manufacturer says I should do as closely as I can, and I don't, don't uh, you know, over rev or kind of abuse the engine, then uh, if anything does go wrong with it, then it's under warranty. If I abuse it, run the hell out of it when it's brand new, something happens, uh, the engine seizes up or whatever, and I've only got 50 miles on the bike, <laughs> they're going to know I abused it, and they ain't going to pay for it, and I have to replace the engine. Anyway, what are your philosophies on brake in I don't know if this log is even going to come out, because it's kind of loud, the, the wind and everything, but yeah, anyway, if you could hear me, and if I'm making sense, which sometimes I'm not sure I am making sense. Anywho, yeah, okay, so there was a topic. Woohoo, I got another topic, yeah, okay. Um, maybe Thomas H. was talking about the death of motovlogging. I don't know that motovlogging is dying so much as it's changing. A lot of the uh, guys that I have been subscribed to for many years, they have uh, changed their style. They've gone on to other interests. They've become bored with the motovlogging, or they have had life events. Yeah, I think that's the, uh, the term that's best used for it, life events. Um, I myself, for the last few years, uh, have kind of gone through that as well. I mean, up until about 2012, I was pretty proficient with my uh, with my vlogging. You know, probably not the most proficient. I definitely don't put out as many videos as uh, Tom does. But uh, starting around 2012, my father's health became really bad, and I had a lot of stressors besides that. And then in 2014, we moved. My dad passed away right after we moved, so those were other stressors that just kind of precluded me from vlogging. And honestly, I'm only just now getting to a point where I'm feeling like I want to do it again. Um, it's been a long time. I mean, I got the new bike. I mean, this is this is one of my incentives for getting a new bike is to get me out to riding and doing something other than sitting on my ass at my computer or working around the yard at home. Because that's all I do these days. I work for work, then I work at home. And it's becoming really, really, really boring and monotonous. So I've got to do something for myself here and hopefully not kill myself at the boot. Ooh, nice twisty road. I gotta watch my speed here because, again, I am not familiar with this road. But it apparently goes left and right. And yeah, nice big wide turn. Cool. I think I found some new ro roads to ride on back through here. Yeah, shifting is a lot better with the uh, boots on and with that toe a shifter raised up just a wee little bit. And again, I have no idea where the heck I'm at here. I know kind of where I'm headed to. Oh, I'm back in Claremont, which is the city I live in. Something I gotta figure out on this bike, I keep gripping my throttle really hard and it makes my hand hurt. It's not that the throttle is hard to turn, but for some strange reason I keep gripping it really hard. I guess because I'm not used to the bike and I'm nervous about it or something.
not 100% sure exactly where I'm at. Hey, I got my cell phone with me. If I get lost, I can use navigation to get me home. Oh, okay, now I do know where I'm at. I'm headed towards uh, Highway 50. So yeah, I know where I'm at. I can get home from here. Okay, cool. Those are some nice roads back there. I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna have to check that out a little more. Yep, definitely, definitely, definitely. All right, unfortunately, I'm gonna take the fast way home so that I don't get lost going back. <laughs>